What's going on guys, Pokey here with another Project Nova update. In this episode I wanted to go over some of the changes coming to the fitting system. To get started, let's talk about fitting resources. In Dust, Dropsuits had a certain amount of two fitting resources, Power Grid and CPU. Modules, weapons, and equipment also had an associated CPU and PG cost, so when you fit one of these modules or equipment to the drop suit, it would subtract its fitting cost from the available fitting resource of that suit. If the cost of the weapons, modules, and equipment exceeded the amount of available CPU or PG of the drop suit, the fit would be rendered invalid and you could not use it in battle. Nova will follow a similar model, however the developers have decided that instead of having two fitting resources, there will be only a single fitting resource. So that being said, drop suits will only have a power grid limit, and everything you fit to the suit will have a power grid cost. Next I want to talk about slot layouts. So in Dust, every drop suit had high and low slots. Each type of slot could only have specific types of modules fit into those slots, with each drop suit having a unique combination of high and low slots. So for example, Shield modules were almost exclusively fit in the high slots, and as such, drop suits that favored shields tended to have a higher number of high slots. Similarly, armor modules were almost exclusively fit in low slots, and as such, drop suits that favored armor tended to have a larger quantity of low slots. Nova is moving away from this high and low slot concept, though the exact details are still a little unclear. At the very least, if there are different types of module slots, they will most likely not be called high and low, as the developers feel that these names are not very descriptive to what types of modules you actually fit in them. It is also possible that there will be no differentiation in the types of slots, and instead drop suits will rely more heavily on bonuses to encourage people to fit certain types of modules. Now I want to talk about deployable equipment. In Dust, deployable equipment was a finite resource, meaning you carried a limited number of an item and could deploy into the field to provide support for your team. These deployables could be dropped as frequently as you wanted until you ran out of them. In order to get more, you would need to return to a supply depot and restock them to your fit. In order to counteract the excessive amount of equipment being deployed into the field, each piece of equipment had a bandwidth cost that effectively limited the maximum amount of deployable equipment a drop suit could have in the field at one time. Unfortunately, the system was a little clunky, and particularly frustrating for players who had drop suits with bonuses specifically for deployable equipment. Because the equipment was finite, once all of the suit's deployables were consumed, their relative value to the team dropped significantly. And while you could go back to get more equipment from a supply depot, it required running out of the battle and it kind of pulled players out of the action which felt kind of unsatisfying and clunky. Project Nova will utilize a duration and cooldown system to curb the excessive equipment deployment while also keeping players who utilize equipment in the action for longer. Deployable equipment, once deployed, will have a fixed duration before it burns out and disappears. This prevents an excessive amount of equipment from building up in the field over time. Additionally, instead of having a fixed amount of deployables that you can hold at once, these assets will operate on a cooldown system. Once deployed, players will need to wait for the equipment to cool down before it can be deployed again. This effectively controls the rate of how often it can be deployed, but with the benefit of never running out of said equipment mid-battle. Now I want to talk about active modules. Dust didn't have active dropsuit modules, but it did have active modules for vehicles and some active equipment. While vehicles are confirmed to not be in Project Nova, the developers wanted to bring the idea of active modules to dropsuits and equipment. Primarily, there are two types of active modules and equipment. First, you have modules that simply activate, apply an effect, and then cool down for a fixed period of time before they can be used again. Infantry active scanners were a good example of this from Dust. Secondly, you have modules and equipment that once activated have a pool of energy they start to draw from and deplete while the effect is active. The effect will remain active until you run out of energy or if you deactivate it early. Once the effect ends, the module or equipment begins to recharge itself at a certain rate. Typically speaking, the asset can be activated regardless if it's fully charged or not, meaning that it can be toggled on or off as needed to fit the situation so long as it has sufficient time to partially recharge between activations. A good example of this from Dust was the cloaking device. That being said, Project Nova will likely feature more emphasis on active modules, with the active modules having a much stronger but temporary effect, with traditional passive modules having a weaker but ongoing effect. This should make encounters more engaging, as players will now have to actively monitor their module cooldowns, as well as make smart choices on when to activate them. And with that, I'm wrapping up this Project Nova update. You guys are actually pretty well caught up to everything there is to know about Project Nova at this point, there are still a few tidbits of information I might share in a future video, but I would love if you could submit some questions and I'd be more than happy to go over some answers.
And that being said, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to Biomast.com. Thank you.